Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Steam Deck OLED, or the Steam Deck OLED, however you want to pronounce it. Recently, Valve announced a new Steam Deck, and it definitely came as a surprise to a lot of people. You can actually buy this November 16th from the Steam website. I'll leave a link in the description, but I was lucky enough for them to send me over an earlier unit. This is a retail unit, it's not a prototype or anything like that. And uh, first thing I want to do here is unbox it, show you everything that comes with the new OLED Steam Deck. And uh, first up, I believe we have the charger. And yep, we've got the 45 watt charger. Now, all of the Steam Decks that I personally have don't have the Steam logo on them. And the cord is a bit shorter, but I did buy kind of the first wave of the Steam Decks when they were released. So I'm not sure if they were, you know, putting these out with other Steam Decks on the market. Either way, nice to see a longer cable here. Next up, we've got the Steam Deck OLED itself. Now this does have a new carrying case and it's got a removable interior compartment. We'll take a look at all of that in just a second. And as you can see on the top of this case, we've got a new logo indicating that it is the OLED Steam Deck. And the unit I have here is a one terabyte version. It's not the special edition. So basically, it looks just like the original Steam Deck, minus uh, the analog sticks or the underside of the analog sticks are black instead of white. But they do have that special edition version listed over on their website, and it looks great. It's got a kind of a transparent case, a little bit of a different color scheme. And the first thing I'm noticing right off the bat is it is noticeably lighter than the LCD version of the Steam Deck. So uh, we all know that the Steam Deck was a bit of a hoss. This is coming in a bit lighter, and you can really feel it. With this new case, it does have a removable insert. It just uh, uses Velcro to kind of attach inside of there. And I mean, if you just put the Steam Deck in this, it's definitely going to protect it. It's got that padding there. Pretty cool little feature. I went ahead and signed in, downloaded a couple games. I've got everything set up. And as soon as you boot this up, you really do notice the difference in the screen. And along with it being an OLED display, it's also got a higher refresh rate coming in at 90 hertz instead of 60. 600 nits of brightness in SDR mode and up to 1000 nits of brightness in HDR mode. The LCD Steam Deck does up to 400 nits of brightness, so it is noticeably brighter. I mean, even in SDR mode, 200 nits does make a pretty big difference. So on the bottom, we've got the OLED Steam Deck. On the top, we've got the LCD Steam Deck. And keep in mind, the one that I have here does have that anti-glare glass. Straight on, it's really kind of hard to tell in a video or a picture. In real life, it's definitely more noticeable. But in these videos and pictures, you can kind of get an idea from the viewing angles. So now on the bottom, we've got the LCD Steam Deck. On the top, we've got the OLED. And just giving you a live video here. Remember, both of these are at 100% brightness. You can see that the OLED really does outshine that LCD. Now it's not just the screen that's been upgraded on the OLED version. So for that APU, they actually shrunk that die. We're now using a six nanometer instead of a seven in the LCD. It is basically the same chip. We've got that boost up to 3.5, four cores, eight threads with RDNA2 graphics at 1.6 gigahertz. But they did upgrade the RAM speed here to 6400 as opposed to 5500 in the LCD. The screen is also coming in a bit bigger at 7.4 inches. Plus, we've got that 90 hertz refresh rate instead of 60. You can also pick up the OLED with either a 512 or 1 terabyte out of the box. And of course, we can always upgrade the older one, no problem at all. It's got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 as opposed to Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5.0. It also has a larger battery coming in at 50 watt hour instead of 45. We still get 45 watt quick charging here. And the weight on this is 640 grams. The LCD version is around 669, and yeah, I mean, when you pick this up, you can definitely tell the difference. Now, I was really hoping to see a more powerful APU here, like something with RDNA 3 graphics, but they've basically kept the same thing. They just shrunk that die, which should result in cooler temps, but we've also got that OLED, which pulls a lot less power than the LCD, plus a larger battery, and in turn, we can actually get much better battery life out of the OLED Steam Deck than the original LCD. Another thing I was really interested in testing out was the Wi-Fi speeds. Remember, on the LCD Steam Deck, we've got Wi-Fi 5. On the OLED, we've got Wi-Fi 6. This is on my home network, and this is not theoretical speeds. We can obviously get more theoretically on both of these. This is a real-world test with my router. 
on the LCD Steam Deck, 290 down, 246 up, and I'll tell you, this was actually a good test. Usually, I'm around 230 down with this. Upload is usually around the same, but I mean, I can already tell you, yeah, with that Wi-Fi 6, we're getting much more out of the OLED Steam Deck. 619 down, 342 up, and this is megabits per second. But yeah, I mean, obviously, that Wi-Fi 6 is going to be a lot faster than Wi-Fi 5. And that's one thing I kind of struggled with on the LCD Steam Deck. Whenever I was downloading a bunch of games, I usually kind of plugged it into a hub and Ethernet just to get those really fast speeds. But now with Wi-Fi 6, I don't think I'm going to have an issue. So I've been messing around with the OLED for a little while, and I'll tell you, the user experience does seem a bit smoother. Just a little more fluid here because uh, we do have that 90 hertz display. Heading into the performance section, you can see up to 90 and we can go all the way down to 10. So we do have a lot of refresh rates that we can mess around with when it comes to games. And uh, as you know, some of this does need to be adjusted per game. And of course, this OLED does support HDR, but right now, not in the UI. You will need to get into a game that supports HDR, like uh, Cyberpunk. But the first thing I wanted to do was just check this 90 Hertz display out with a game that'll truly run at 90 Hertz. So here we are with Shredder's Revenge. And uh, I know it might be a bit hard to see, but we are at 90 FPS here with this game. Kind of fluctuating between 88 and 90. Either way you look at it, still a really smooth experience. And I know it's a bit hard to kind of transfer over to a YouTube video, but the next thing I wanted to show off was Left 4 Dead 2 running at 90 FPS. We're locked here at 90 Hertz, and yeah, this is awesome. These Source games will run at 90 FPS, so if you wanted to do Half-Life 2, obviously we've got Left 4 Dead 2, Portal, Portal 2, there's a lot of older awesome games on Steam that will run this well on the Steam Deck. And yeah, definitely be worth going back through your library, checking everything out. Now the final thing I wanted to show off here was some power draw and HDR. So we've got Cyberpunk 2077 running here at the uh, Steam Deck preset. HDR is off right now, but if you take a look at the battery draw, we're right there at around 23.7 watts. On the LCD Steam Deck, same exact settings here, we're about 25 to 26, so we are drawing less power, and it really comes down to that OLED display. And of course, it would be a little less draw here if we just locked it at 30, but I wanted to keep it unlocked to draw as much as possible here with this game. But the next thing I wanted to take a look at was HDR. Remember, in SDR mode, we can do up to 600 nits of brightness. With HDR enabled, it'll do up to 1,000. And Cyberpunk 2077 is one of those games that does support HDR. We've actually got two different modes, HDR10 and HDR10 sRGB. We're going to go with the first setting here. And I do have the built-in HDR visualizer on. You can uh, enable this from settings. Go ahead and turn that overlay off. And I've locked my ISO on the camera, so it might look a little blown out. But I wanted to show you how bright this really gets. It looks absolutely amazing. I mean, we've got those really deep blacks here, rich colors, and a thousand nits of brightness. So uh, with games that do support it, this is really awesome. And I'm wondering if, you know, there ever be a way to do HDR with all games, kind of like system-wide FSR. You never know. I mean, they could come out with something. Now I wanted to go to HDR sRGB. Does change up the look just a little bit. We've still got those super deep blacks, really rich colors, and having HDR on a little display like this is pretty cool. It does kind of change the overall look. To tell you the truth, um, I mean, just by itself being an OLED display, I think it looks great without it. But, you know, it's here if this is something you want to enable, and it's not going to hurt performance at all. So now that I've spent a little time with the Steam Deck OLED, I can give you my first impressions. Now, uh, one of the burning questions is, is it going to be worth upgrading from the LCD to the OLED Steam Deck? Personally, I don't think it would be. Now, if you're an avid user of the Steam Deck, then, you know, going into something like this might definitely be a big win for you. But if you've been happy with the Steam Deck you have right now, you might have upgraded the M.2 SSD, added a larger SD card, maybe a few little mods here and there. I would stick with what you have. Now, of course, we can get a little better performance out of this with that faster RAM. Going from 55 to 64 can net us anywhere from 3 to 8 FPS, depending on the game. Because when it comes down to it, this iGPU utilizes system RAM, and theoretically, the faster we can get that RAM, the better we can get this iGPU to perform. 
But remember, this iGPU is still based on RDNA 2. I mean, the overall APU is basically the same, it's just got a shrunken die. Now, I do think that this is what the Steam Deck should have been right out of the gate, and yeah, I mean, I think they've done a great job. This is kind of a console refresh like we see with others, but I think they've added some really great stuff here. Lighter, better battery life, and I will have a few more videos coming up. I'd love to get some performance testing out of the way and true battery life test. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look at the Steam Deck OLED. I personally really like it. Now, if you've already got a Steam Deck and you enjoy using it, I would stick with what you have until the next generation with a better APU. But if you didn't pick up a Steam Deck and you were ever on the fence about it, now would be the perfect time to get this version here because it is better in almost every single way. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave some links to Steam's website in the description below. And let me know if there's anything else you want to see running on the new Steam Deck. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.